excited. He's ready to go. Excited. All right, put your hands together. Welcome, Daniel. Hi, my name is uh, Daniel. My project is on uh, history. to uh, find a way to make history more engaging. Uh, I plan to do so by bringing in artifacts, like, uh, for example, a hat, um, to make it more exciting. I've also thought about making electives to go dive deeper into those who are interested. Uh, my problem is essentially just restating that uh, it's some are interested and some aren't. That's how it is. But I wanted to make a way so that it's not all monotonous, per se. It's not all just, uh, there's some extra fun in it. Um, I plan to uh, talk with Ms. Chandler, the social studies chair of the electives and have a survey, give out a survey to the student body to see what electives they might be interested in. That was just an example like a hat. Uh, my implementation, I'll bring them and show them to a class in U.S. history. I'll have a survey that I'll give out to see what the student body would like to see as a new history elective. Um, after receiving the results, I will coordinate with Ms. Chandler and present my findings and start process creating the lecture. There will be a lesson plan for research that will have to be done before that. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Daniel. Daniel? Are you interested in history? Yes. You gotta show me, okay? I want you to show me your enthusiasm. I know you are, and you've got good slides up there, but you gotta show me, okay? Because if you're I forget that Miss Chandler that you were gonna talk to, if Miss Chandler was in here, would she think that man, he's he's my number one student. He's gonna be the guy that's gonna I'm teaching him and he's gonna be the one to pass the torch. Would would Miss Chandler think that if you were up here talking right now? I, <laughs> I get that, that's fine. And I don't want you to be, because I want you to be, you got to come up here and just talk about your love of history. So when you come up here and you say, some are interested and some are not, that, that and I get that. I, back when I was in high school, I probably wasn't, I know I wasn't interested in history. And as I'm getting older, I think, you know what, I probably, I miss that. So think about what what's the problem that if you're not interested in history, because there are things that we're going to lose if, if you, everyone here is not interested in history. You know, think about think about what you can put in slides of you know things that are happening now that we, you know that you're not going to be able to pass along the, uh, to your children. Uh, you know, I think about things that good or bad of, of history. You know, I, I can think about 9/11 exactly where I was. I can tell you the minutes uh, where I was at the stoplight. You know, the radio getting interrupted. Uh, what happened, what, what was going on, I, I, down to the precise time, and I think everybody, sure. three of the four on the panel can say that. And so, I, I think for you, you know. Did you say you were one? 9-11? 9-11, you know. 2001. 2001, were you? Oh, I was three. You were three, so you probably, you weren't at a stoplight driving a car. No. Um, so, start, and I would encourage you to bring that out in, in, in slides and start thinking about, you know, things that are, historical that, that, that maybe are not even historical yet that didn't think about things that have happened right you know in the last 20 years that in fast forward in 40 years that you're going to be talking about and sharing uh, you know with your kids and your family if you have a passion for teaching history what are you going to be teaching in 40 years that's what I want to see come out in your presentation because I know that it's in you the other thing I would say is you know when you talk about the hat or whatever you know make that bigger so I can see that uh, on your slide deck the, uh, was, uh, yeah, one of the slides mentioned that uh, World War II was a thing that, like, 
uh, patriotism and also the uh, or it's like someone that said the Holocaust is like shortened to a sentence. We barely cover uh, certain like World War Two. Yeah, absolutely. So you know those are the things um, you know that just to mention and you know. It would be even interesting of, you know, if the, you know, your, your problem in, in stating that some are interested and some are not, you know, it would be interesting if you had the time to even, you know, to, to loosen people up of doing a short quiz of asking people and raise a hand of, do a short quiz of, do you know these facts? Do, do you know these historical facts? And, and it's maybe, it may be shocking, eye-opening of like, wow, I, I don't know those. I, you know, that, that's interesting, you know, or... You know, some things that have that effect. There is a lot of interesting stuff in history. There's, there, there, there's a lot. Mm -hmm. The problem is when you uh, forget history, there's the the history has a lot of lessons that can be learned, and when you you repeat the same mistakes. Sure. Like I consider 9/11 a second Pearl Harbor. Personal feelings for sure, but I think in in your slide you can even reference of great places even around here to, you know, as a as a you know high school student to encourage, you know, where to go, um, you know, go visit, you know, there's lots of avenues to take of the historical value of right here in our, you know, mm -hmm. fishers, uh, whether you're going to Connor Prairie or you want to go down, down to Indianapolis and, and visit our great museums, uh, there's a lot of great places to go see. Uh, question, was there uh, something in, um, a book that you read, a class that you took that like really sparked your interest, like, oh my gosh, this is really interesting, I want to learn more about that. Was there something that kind of set you off down this problem opportunity path? I really, ever since I've been young, I've absolutely loved history. Okay. I think for as much as I can remember, I have dived specifically into World War II because it is my passion. To such an extent, I could probably tell you about it. And now I'm diving into like the political politics part of it. Yeah, it would have been nice to see that passion in your presentation and focus more like that. Um, I also had a difficult time reading a couple of the slides. Um, they were just kind of a little too compressed and tiny. Yeah, I couldn't find a way to make the picture bigger and have the text in the same slide. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, if there's a specific moment in history that you want to focus on, I think that's great. I mean, especially because I don't know how much history you guys get in high school, but I remember thinking in high school that it wasn't a big thing that we touched on. So, yeah, I mean, focusing on World War II, that kind of thing, seeing if there's other people that would be involved and could join you and do research. And, I mean, I think that's great. Yeah, we don't want to lose where we all came from. And going off what he said as well, I think if you explain, like, how you would want to see like the teacher teach like history I think that's also very important because like I sit in my um, history 201 class right now it's like three or four weeks of him lecturing and then maybe a video there every once in a while and I'm like okay I don't understand anything that we're going on but then I take the test you know so it's like you explain like the activities or like the videos or um, stuff that you would want to see in the classroom like you talked about artifacts like coming in I think if you like explain that, then that like would really gain people's attention because like me personally, like I'm not a huge history buff, but I think I would be if it was more engaging yeah. and interacting like my other classes. Kind of a play off of what she said. Um, things that I'm just speaking on my own experience. Things that have always piqued my interest is Hollywood or books that I've seen. Um, you know, the movie National Treasure has a ton of historic accident it also has a lot of stuff that's not real maybe this elective that you um, present to the school board or the head of social studies is uh, comparing a Hollywood movie to what actually happened uh, I watched another one called the death of Stalin and it was funny about how he dies and all. it's like a comedy but like did those things really happen and so maybe compare like the fictional to what when he died and what happened to his body and was he enthroned in, in a row of roses around his thing, you know, things like that. That could be something, because that would be interesting to me, like what is really real oh, and, and learning roses. something like that. But maybe have a plan for um, the class that you're 
you're wanting to uh, add as an elective, that would be something to concentrate on like for your next step. I that with like Hollywood, if there isn't much known about, for example, Stalin's death, there isn't really much known. Yeah. So sometimes you have to add things in mm -hmm. to make it interesting, otherwise it, you're not really going to have a movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's what she's saying, like, that's how you engage people that aren't necessarily history buffs. Like you get them in a different angle and get them reeled in and then give them the facts. I think that that can be, yeah, because I don't know that I would sit down and read a whole book on World War II. It's not up my alley. But given, I mean, I watched a movie with, I watched Pearl Harbor. I watched that movie with Ben Affleck. So I feel like I would be more engaged if you were to be like, well, watch this movie, but at the end of the day, that's not really what happened. And then I'm listening to you. That kind of thing. That's why I uh, like Tor 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 as a movie, but it's more accurate than Pearl Harbor. What is it called? Tor Tor Tor. Oh, it's it's a 1980s movie. Oh, okay. Cool. You know, one of the things um, I think you're going to have to to Maybe, maybe even pull your audience, right? I mean, this is a class of everybody in here in U.S. history, for the most part, right? Yeah. 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 So some of you like it, yeah? <laughs> some of you prefer not to go there, yeah? yeah. Okay. So. Daniel um, was spot on. <laughs> yeah. So my thought is, like, I know you love going to history class, and and you nerd out about all the history things all the time, right? I mean, like, we have conversations, and I'm like, oh yeah, he's into it. So you gotta you gotta touch base with the people who aren't into it, right? And see what might get them there, right? Um, why might I watch a movie with Ben Affleck in it about an event, but when I when my history teacher's talking about the same event in class, I'm like, nah, right? Um, what what is the difference there? What tends to hook people? And I think and think going from there and developing some of these elective classes that you're talking about, um, your project is super doable. Okay, so what I mean by that is that like. I think you can actually make an impact here. Um, but you have to come at it more objectively than I'm a huge history buff and I'm really into this because you've got to think about it from the shoes of people who are right? right? Um, so I think as we go forward, that's going to be uh, something we'll, we'll tackle right away is like, all right, separate myself from being Daniel for a second and, and let's look at it through the lens of somebody who um, might watch a blockbuster movie yeah. but might not necessarily stay away from class, right? And how can we close that gap and then go from there? And I think, I think you're going to find that your history teachers um, would prefer their students to be engaged in class, right? It's easier to do this job when the kids are into it and paying attention. So um, I think they'd be willing to listen. Yeah.